So you have no money, you have no clients. Hell, you ain't got no business. <laughs> All right, so in all seriousness, let's just talk about it. You may not have no money to start your event business. Well, you're in luck because you definitely found the right video. And I'm going to go over some tips that you can utilize to get money in the door right away. So if you want to learn more, let's keep watching. Let's find out what tips you should be doing implementing your business today. Hey, designers. Welcome back to My Inspiring Designs with me, Justine, where all I want to do is inspire the event designer in you. If you're new here on my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified on all the business tips, tricks, and hacks that I do here on my channel. Also, if you're new here, I do have a membership, a monthly membership that is very, very, very affordable. The link will be down below. It is called Design Your Dream Society, where you're able to turn your creative skill and your side hustle into an actual real event business. It is where I deliver monthly lessons to you as long as you're a member of the society where you're able to get help from me and other designers along your journey. So if you're ready to get started, feel free to click the link down below. Hopefully I'll see you there. Okay, so let's get started and discuss what do you do when you have no money coming into your business, but you really want to turn your creative skills in the event space into a real business. Well, before I give away the tips, what I want you to do is to understand this. As the video progresses, you'll get more and more valuable tips. What I want you to do at the end is, if it resonates with you, definitely hit the like button. But I really want you to leave a comment below of which tip you're going to implement in your business right away. Because the one thing I notice about my designers in all of my programs and whoever comes into my world, they'll research and, and take in a lot of information, but they hesitate about implementing the information that was given so I want you to write a comment after you finish watching this video and let me know which tip you're going to do and I will be there to respond to you and hold you accountable so the first thing that you should be doing in your event business regardless if you're getting clients or not that's the biggest thing I want you to watch this video even if you are getting clients because there will be slow months there will be months where you won't get clients as much as you did at your peak season so implement these strategies even if you are getting clients but for those of you who are getting no clients what i want you to start doing is the first tip is i want you to tell every single person you know that you have an event business the reason why i say this is because a lot of designers when you're first getting started you tend to be hesitant about telling people what you're doing, what you're coming up with, because you're kind of lost. Like you don't know what you're doing in the beginning stages of building a business. So a lot of designers tend to retract and kind of hide away from their family and friends when in actuality, that's a huge misconception, right? You will get judged. You will get laughed at. You will be made fun of. <laughs> I think that's part of the process. If you have people who love you very dearly, they'll be like, what the heck are you doing? You can't start a business. You have no idea what you're doing. Good. Actually, hearing those doubts and fears, and if it makes you feel some type of way, it's something that you already feel anyway. So get it out there. Hear it out. Don't worry about being judged because they're going to judge you anyways. However, the reason why I'm telling you to go to those people, especially those people who are your loved ones, is because your first client is basically going to come from those people around you. A lot of people think that, oh, I won't tell my family and friends because they're going to judge me, they're going to laugh at me, they're going to do all these things. But in actuality, your first few clients will come from someone you know. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be your mom, your dad, your auntie, your uncle, your cousins, your, you know, your kids, whoever, wherever you are in your journey or age range. But I will tell you this, it will be from someone that you know. Even if you are getting clients, sometimes people who you know may forget that you're doing what you're doing because you're not talking about it as much since you're getting clients in the door. I've had that happen. True story. My cousin didn't realize that I was running a business or she forgot that I was doing a balloon business. So when I was talking about it, she's like, oh my goodness, such and such needed balloons and I completely forgot you did it after three years of being in the business. So it happens even when your family and friends do know what you're doing. But please tell everybody that you know and part of that conversation should be how your business is going. 
Here's a bonus tip. If people ask you about your business, that means they know you have something to offer, especially if they're just trying to see how it's going. So that means you're doing a good job with marketing your business. So continue to do so. But if you're not getting people to ask about your business, then you have to start talking about it more often. Another tip about starting a business with no money in the door is you have to understand that people have to see your work and your designs at least 10 times before considering you. That's right, 10 times. Not once, 10. The reason why people need to see your work constantly is because they're being flooded with marketing ads, other people's things. Like, you're not the first thing that they think about when they wake up. You're not the first person that they remember when they go to sleep right? They're being shown so many things throughout the day, including yourself as a consumer or a client, all of these things. And it goes into our short term memory where we don't remember everything that was shown because if we did, our brain would be just like exploding right now. So just know that recency bias is very real. We only remember what is shown in the moment that we're shown it. But if it doesn't stay in our long term memory, we'll tend to forget. This is true about your clients. So make sure that they see your work all the time every single day i mean not every day so like don't don't get too crazy on that but just know the more often that they see your work the more likely they will remember to consider you for their next event so my next tip on how to start with no money is to validate your offer and what do i mean by that well when you're first starting out you don't know what people like you have no idea what people are willing to buy and i want to read you a quote that i found that i'm going to pull my phone out and read it to you because it was phenomenal in a way of what you should be deciding on what to sell when it comes to your business stop operating out of obliviousness of what demand actually exists for the offer you want to be selling business is not meant to entertain you or to satisfy your ego yes you have great ideas not every idea you have is not a great business opportunity. Learn to find the alignment between the skill sets you have, the demand that exists within the market you currently have access to, and the problem those people are willing to pay to access a solution you can provide. Here's the thing, when it comes to validating your offer, I love that post so much because it basically talks about like if you're not aligned with the demand of what you have access to to solve a problem your clients have, you have no business. And this is a lot of the reasons why a lot of people don't get clients in the door right away because they're creating a business based on their own selfish needs. Like I'm not, I'm going to say what it is. It may not be intentionally selfish, but you're just thinking about yourself when it comes to starting a business. Instead, you have to validate what you have to offer to an audience that needs it. This is why when starting my balloon business, it was a lot easier for me to start because there was an increasing demand for these balloon garlands because they were just entering the event industry space. So it was something I was learning and willing to learn. That was a skill set. There was a demand for them because my clients were starting to realize like, oh, these balloon garlands are beautiful. I want them for my next event. Or if they didn't know about it, they were exposed to my page. And then people were willing to pay because they couldn't figure out how to do it. That's validating your offer. Stop sitting here making an event business or a business in general based on what you want and you need. Granted, I wanted balloon garlands, but it wasn't something I was thinking about when I was a client until I started learning and I started to realize that people are willing to pay these prices. The worst thing you can do is develop a business model and a business plan and a business idea and to try to implement it into the world, but nobody's willing to pay. You do not have a business, you have an expensive hobby. I want to get that very clear about who you are and who you're trying to target to. When you validate your offer, you know people are willing to buy this thing that you're trying to sell. It's just a matter of getting people to commit to that price point of what you're trying to sell to them. So to summarize everything um, in one nutshell for this particular tip is just that make sure you have something that people are willing to pay for. That's all it is. <laughs> The next tip for starting an event business with no money is understanding that you can't buy everything and sell it to everyone. I will say this and I hear this over and over and over and over and over again. Oh, but I want to do everything. I want to make these beautiful decorations for people. I just want to do it all. 
I know some of y'all have been with me for a while now, <laughs> but I'm going to say it to the new people and to the people who need to hear it again. Stop thinking that you can do it all and get everything in your business, like inventory wise, and thinking that somebody is going to pay for it because it looks pretty. Oh, that's right. I said it. Just because it looks pretty doesn't mean people are going to buy it. What happens when you want to do it all is that you'll buy everything to solve everyone's problem. I can't be mad that you choose to do it all in an event. All I can do is just wish you well and hope for the best because I already know more than likely it won't turn out in your favor. Every single time someone does it all or decorates an entire event, they're not charging enough money when they're first starting out. They're just not. You have to get with someone who knows what they're doing and who's able to decorate with a team so that way you're maximizing your time with those particular people so that way the event can be executed in a way that's ideal for your business. But that takes a lot of work, that takes a lot of money, and that takes a lot of time to grasp. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do it all, right? That could be a very end goal. But if you're just getting started, and I will say this over and over again. The fastest way to get money in the door is to specialize in one thing and get known for that specific thing. Stop buying things that you think people will buy because that goes into our previous tip of validating your offer. If you're sitting here buying everything and buying things that are going on sale, I'm not saying it's wrong to get things that you know would be a seasonal item next year that you can utilize to promote. There are some things that you can get now if you don't have a client in the door just yet. However, in DYD society, I go over how to get those items in the door without utilizing your own money. So if you're really interested, Feel free to click that link. Um, it's one of the first few lessons that I go over in order to get money in the door when you have no money. The next tip for starting an event business with uh, zero dollars is to understand that service-based businesses don't need a lot of money to get started. Make sure you have a systematized way to get clients in the door, how to onboard them, how to deliver invoices, but you wanna make sure that you have something that can generate sales in your business because if you haven't figured out how to get money all the logistics that you're paying for is just putting you in the hole in the negative when it comes to your business you have to figure out what strategies you can implement in your business today to generate sales because you can register your business but if you have no clientele you're not a business you're just something that's registered with the state that's making no money. You have to understand that if you don't know how to make money, it's pointless in registering and starting a business. I want you to figure out how to get people to pay for your services and then taking that money that you get, maybe that first client, and utilizing it then to register your business because all it takes is just for one client to say yes for you to realize like oh i have something that somebody's worth paying for when you start an event business you don't need a lot of money to start in fact in dyd society again i go over a strategy that i have utilized over and over and over again not just with my business but other designers businesses to get money in the door and they're able to get money in the door of their business this way they can now utilize that money to reinvest back into their business, whether it's registering their business or buying inventory that they need for their business instead of utilizing their money from their nine to five. Granted, a lot of people were like, well, I'm not going into the negative. I already have the money. Your business doesn't have the money. You do, right, from another different source. Now, I'm not saying that's wrong, but we have to figure out how do we make money work for us so that we can reinvest it into our business and ourselves as CEO. Again, I'm just going to state it again. Use my advice like a grain of salt. Don't sit here and go to no lawyer, tax, accountant, or, you know, accountant or CPA and say, be like, well, Justine said I don't have to register. No, I'm telling you right now. Okay, This is not legal advice. This is just something that I feel that you should do first when you first start out. Now, if you have clients in the door, you should be registering your business. You should be having a contract with a lawyer. You should be tracking your numbers and you should be paying taxes. Okay, that's best practices when it comes to becoming a business owner. That's the difference between a side hustle and a business owner. And that's where my channel fits into your world. All right, so that is all the tips I've had. If something resonated with you, give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps me get out to other people just like you so that way they're able to build their creative side hustle into a real business. 
And again, just like the directions I said from the beginning of this video, I want you to tell me which tip you're going to implement in your business today and write it down in the comments and I will hold you accountable in making sure that you're doing that. So feel free to let me know. I'll be cheering you on. Again, if you are just getting started and you really need a step-by-step -step guide, feel free to join Design Your Dream Society. I would love to have you there. It is a small community, so guess what? You get a lot of time with me in the times that we do share. So I hope you're able to join if not I'll catch you guys in the next video continue designing your dreams to reality and I'll see you later bye so that way you're getting clients and that way you're able to turn this creative skill into a side not a side hustle you're taking your creative skill and turning it into a real business